Well, for this album, I mean, it was pretty much made entirely in, in lockdown. So it was a bit of a nightmare in that respect. And normally when I've worked with vocalists in the past, we've always kind of, well, unless they've been a, in a different country, they come to the studio and we work together and we build the ideas together. And um, that feels like an, a natural process. But in this case, we, uh, apart from Cairo, everything was done remotely because of the lockdown. We couldn't travel and stuff. Um, there's this brilliant guy called Yo from New York that uh, is on one track. Uh, called Voodoo, um, proper New York MC, but quite a new school. His, his own music is really abstract and very kind of deep, loads of mad synth elements going on. So I could fit, it's not like he's from that kind of old school East Coast vibe where, yeah. where that wouldn't feel right for me to be <laughs> going into that world. But he's quite progressive. And uh, and so it made sense for us to get him, get him on the album. Um, and same with Capital Lay, he's one of the old school guys that's been, he's from San Francisco, he's been doing stuff. I've had him on a track before and he's always worked with the sort of broken beat guys and had a connection with the UK. So, um, yeah, it's not like it's, it's been for, it's not like it's been forced. It feels like there's sort of bonds natural. and musical connections there that, that mean that you can kind of, you know, you should be able to do this sort of, these sort of collaborations and they make sense musically. In the case of Cairo, we was actually able to get him over and work on Rain together. And um, yeah, he's, he's an amazing young vocalist uh, from East London. And we were, I was put in touch with him through a mutual friend. And, and to be able to get in the studio and actually, you know, work together was, you know, it, it, it just feels like you're doing something proper as opposed to receiving some vocals that have been, even though they've been written specifically to your track. He's got an amazing tone. I mean, obviously, you 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 know, from my point of view, I'm kind of listening to vocalists that I think their their vocal style and their tone will suit the um, the track that I'm working on, and then I'll reach out to them and I'll send them a demo version of that track. Uh, so I've already got an idea of how they're going to sound, and I might have heard some other tracks of theirs. So uh, you know, nine times out of ten, you know, you've got a feeling that it's going to work already. Once we get their tracks in the computer, then it's just a normal process of producing something that, you know, keeps their sound as their sound, because you want them. And, and especially on uh, the, the, this album, the point was to keep uh, all the music really simple and really sort of stripped back. And I've just been inspired by a lot of stuff just kind of since lockdown, really listening to a lot of non club music that you just notice how feet, how, how important a vocal is as a, as the kind of focus. So that was inspiring for me. And tr I was trying to kind of pull, ev pull everything back, keep everything super stripped back so that the, the voice could be the cent central focus. Um, and yeah, that you're just doing it's just the same tricks as with everyone with compressors and with EQ and stuff, just to bring, push that voice push it, like yeah. right to the front and have everything else sitting underneath. Okay. If it's a club track, I tend to sort of start more with the beats and the groove. Um, with with this album, it was really coming from the samples that I'd found. So I spent uh, I spent months actually kind of collecting a whole bunch of sounds that were just sitting in a big folder on the hard drive and fight like I was working through them, sort of thinking, right, that could work for this sort of style of track or this tempo. And then as, as they, they, they kind of got refined and then they started to formulate into, into like 20 different tracks. And then, then I started constructing the tracks from those samples. So really the, the, the my, my tracks always stem from samples. from samples. Yeah. Occasionally there might even be like a bass line, which will have drums and stuff on top. Yeah. Um, that you can then filter out and so you're just left with the bass line right. even though you'll sort of have all that noise up the top end but it will just be cut out cut to the down. point yeah where you can kind of and then you can bring that bass out with eq or like a resonant filter um but uh yeah you're, you're 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 generally looking for like solo sound so i've got a lot for for, for birdhouse there was a lot of library music that i was lifting oh, from nice. well this is a little stash of kind of library music and ambient stuff um, that I always come back to brilliant for getting samples because there's lots of just held pads and sort of textures and stuff that you can dig into um, 
for the Birdhouse album, uh, Music the Wolf, like the these are the classic sort of library albums, Music the Wolf. They're a whole catalogue of library music, music for adverts. Uh, it says here, modern progressive electronic keyboard sounds played by Astral Sounds. This is full of weird synth stuff. Uh, there's another collection, which is a KPM. Uh, again there's thousands of these records they're kind of this is actually kpm 1229 uh ideas in action this has just got loads of weird little uh these are all pretty old so it's kind of early synth stuff moogie things um there's ridiculously expensive i don't think they are they're, there's so many of them but there's this I one's brilliant music the wolf too. johnny hawksworth um kind of crazy horn stuff on this that is that's sort of insp inspired by but also sampled a few bits here and there from uh, music the wolf uh, ah birdhouse had uh, there's actually some very subtle um bird noises going on in some of the tracks uh, this is the classic bbc woodland and garden birds what a beautiful album um i mentioned uh to meet her. um I've got a whole bunch of stuff of his, which I always come back to. Um, so these are all sort of old um, solo sort of synth stuff. Quite a lot of it is classical music played on synths. Um, brilliant for sampling, but also just really beautiful albums. I think I was talking about the Debussy thing, wasn't I? Yeah. It's not Deb Debussy, I meant Ravel. So this, this Ravel one, him doing Bolero and all that kind of thing on Moogie stuff. I've got loads of these Tomita ones. That's good as well. So Japanese synth player. Oh, nice. <laughs> Brilliant pictures of him in front of massive modular systems. Some wicked covers. Uh, well, really good covers, yeah. So um, yeah, always coming back to those albums. Um, I've got a whole kind of, yeah, collection of stuff that, that is just beautiful for, because there's all these little Moog synths and stuff that are on their yeah. own. Little horn parts. And because they're made for adverts and stuff, because mm -hmm. it's library music, there tend to be these little stings and little thirty-second clips where you get the you get the different parts of the track isolated. So it's quite easy to just pull stuff out from those albums. Plus, they're just beautiful, kind of deep things. And then once yeah. once you've cut them up and created your own thing, um, that can start to sort of you know push you in different directions.